uh, Grays Riverside safe seat. There's no such thing as a safe seat, Michael. You know that as well as I do. What you can't do is fall into the trap of taking any seat for granted or take any resident of Thurrock for granted. It, it's, I guess, an easy question, but what are the key issues coming up in your particular ward? Well, I think there's one major one, which is Grays Beach, which is something that is on everybody's lips and most people whose doors you knock on are talking about it but they're not just talking about it in Grays Riverside I've been doing work in West Thurrock, um, in Ockingdon, in Homesteads you know all over there people are talking about Grays Beach but is it would you call it a luxury that we at this point can't afford if it's if it's costing £143,000 a year there must be in fair play to the Tories of addressing this issue there must be a better way of doing this well, let's, let's put this into perspective, shall we? Um, yes, back in 2006, it was costing about a quarter of a million. It's now cost 143,000 last year. Um, we are only talking about Grays Beach. We're not talking about the cost of cemeteries. We're not talking about the cost of Langdon Hills, Coal House Fort, any other parks around the borough. Every single council taxpayer in Surrey pays 74p a week towards the cost of open spaces, parks and cemeteries. You know, and to be honest, there are some things in life, you know, nobody's jumping up and down and saying, why don't cemeteries pay for themselves? There are some things in life that, you know, as a resident, you have a right to. You have a right to open spaces. You have a right to go to a decent park that is a green flag. You have the right to go to a cemetery. And yes, of course, that doesn't mean we should just throw money at it. And we need to look at getting smarter on how we do use it. was the Tories who pushed that through. But less than two pounds a year for most people, Mike, is not even the price of a pint. Come on, you know, that money cost £150,000. That paid for Grays Beach and more. And yes, of course, we're looking at smarter ways of, of looking at Grays Beach. You've constantly got to look for, you know, continuous improvement. We've got to get leaner, meaner and greener in what we do and how we do it. Um, but, you know, let's get a reality check here. Get your hands off Grays Beach. People use it. People love it. You know, it is not up for sale. You know, over my dead body do we go to privatisation or outsource. However, Gary Haig wishes to package this up. Outsourcing, privatising it or selling it, it's the same thing. Get your hands off. It's a bit cheeky though for you to issue a, pu a publication with the word sold on it. Isn't that inaccurate, isn't it? Until we get confirmation, you know, that there's speculation. And to be honest, you know, you're talking about that, Mike, but for a company to come in, they're going to have to make in excess, in excess of £3,000 a week just to cover the cost of Grays Beach. That's the basic cost. Now, how are you going to do that? The only way you're going to do that is by charging. You are not going to get enough revenue coming through that to do that. The only parks that pay Chessington, Alton Towers, because of what they've got there. So it's, it's not going to happen. So when the numbers fall, that can't happen. What's going to happen to it? It won't have any of the maintenance upkeep. It will be sold. It's prime real estate, for goodness sake river frontage, it ticks all the boxes. They tried it in 2008, Mike. There is an underlying reason why this is, keeps coming up. There's something in the background. Do you not think that's a bit paranoid? Do you just not think that there was an idea that, like they do with impulse leisure? Well, that's know? not worked, has it? You know, and if you look at 2008, it didn't work. Corey's turned around and said, absolutely no. Why come back? What's different? They've not turned around and said, what's different? You know, it's like the back of a fag packet, you know, Thameside Theatre, you know, back of a fag packet. I was at the Arts Council AGM. They are absolutely beside themselves. You know, when you think what happened here a year ago, drama festival, you know, the amazing plays that, you know, Thurrock Court's players put on down there, your voice that goes on down there, different things. Yes, of course we need to get more revenue in. We need to engage more. But that doesn't mean you get rid of it. You look at a different way of managing it. You getting your message out there? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I've delivered a couple of leaflets that have gone out. I've done some door knocking in Riverside. It's been very positive. The biggest thing is to get people out on the day. And can you? Um, yeah, I think so. I think we've got the machine to do that. Um, yeah, I do. I, I think I think people 
of, you know, turned around and seen a different Labour Party running an administration from May. They've seen we care. They've seen we're listening. We've addressed some big issues without making, you know, hitting vulnerable people. You know, and I think we are there. We've tried to do cross-party work, which actually, you talk to people on the doorstep and what they don't want it, the Tories are doing this, Labour are doing that. They want to understand how are you guys going to work together to actually deliver for the residents of Thurrock. You know, we talk about the budget, we did the Let's Talk, we've done um, Star Chambers, we've done Overview and Scrutiny, we've done Cabinet, we've tried to engage. As a Cabinet, we've gone round to different areas in Thurrock trying to talk to residents to be held to account, which actually, as a Cabinet member and a portfolio, it's really important that that's what we do. We understand what people want, to, want of us and what's important to people. And you know, as we've sort of ended up, the last one at Tilbury was really well attended, really, really, it was very, very good, very positive, some really good ideas coming from the audience. We need to do more of that. You know, we need to get people wanting to vote and wanting to understand and saying, you know, not all about, or oh, you're all the same. We're not all the same. You know, we are different, but you know, we do care. But at the end of the day, as they say, like, like it's a, dark. <laughs> it's dark. It is. In conclusion, <laughs> as in general elections, when it comes down to a, a, a handful of uh, constituencies, likewise, we could simply be in a situation here where a few people actually like Pauline Tolson and Shane Hebb and Natalie Quirk and end up voting for them, and then at the end of May, you'll be sitting there in opposition again. That's quite. How would you going to face that? That's democracy. <laughs> And that's democracy. And if that happens, we need to go. We need to understand what we what we've done that hasn't been right. We need to address that. And then we need to be the best damn opposition Thurrock has ever seen. And we need to hold the Tories to account if that's what happens. And stop anything like this going through the privatisation of Grays Beach, the sell-off of the Thameside Theatre, the adult education service and some other really bonk crazy things that you know that, that are being put about in, in leaflets. You know we need to make sure that doesn't happen because we have a responsibility to the residents.